what is meant by work done. Work done, generally, if you don't remember how to explain, you can use the equation to guide you a bit. Force times distance. Or the proper one is force dot distance. Because both of these are really vectors. Okay, anyway, you want to say, uh, don't just say force times distance. Just say in a more English sentence. You say it's a product of force and displacement of an object. Um, strictly speaking, you want to add that this is the, I mean, you can add, this is the component of force that is parallel to displacement. Because you see, if we have a box that is being displaced until, let's say, this position, this is our displacement, and your force is in at an angle like this, we usually, if you want to find force times force times distance, you have to resolve the force to be fx in the horizontal first, then fx times s. So that's what it means by resolving. If it's at an angle, the component is parallel. But anyway, this is one mark, v1. Let's move on. Okay, beach ball from the top of the balcony. Release! Pee, the ball falls vertically and reach a constant terminal velocity. The gravitational potential of the ball decreased by 60 joules. Makes sense. I mean, the ball is going from up here. Drop, 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 drop to the bottom. Pew, drop down. So it goes boop. And you lose 60 joules GP. The ball hits the ground with 16 meters per second and kinetic energy of 23 joules. Show that the mass of the ball is 0 0.18 kg. Okay, how do we do this thing? Maybe if you're not sure what, where to start, let's write out all the equations we know or information we know first. So we know firstly that your GPE is going to decrease. Change in GPE, negative 60 joule. Chop down, ma. And negative is just, it's just to tell myself it decreased. Um, so maybe we use, we think of, oh, miss, can we use MGH? 60 equals to MG delta H. We want to find mass, right? But the problem is we also don't know the height. No information is given. And we have to find that in part 2. So cannot be we use MGH. So I don't think we can use GPE. Maybe we can use uh, kinetic energy. Let's look at the kinetic energy. Release. If your ball is released, that means the initial velocity is 0. It starts off at rest, where Ke is 0. And when it hits the ground, it has a speed of 16. It's constant, so it's okay. Uh, this is a 60 meter per second velocity. So you have some Ke over here. So we do know that the change in Ke, we can find. So let's let's do that. Okay, okay, we can use Ke. So change in kinetic energy is going to be half m times v squared. And this is the whole thing delta. So v squared, hmm, change kinetic energy is 23. We know 23 joules. This is negative 23 joules. Or we can just say 23. We know it's a decrease. Then you have half m final minus initial. So usually we say v square minus u square. But the initial is 0. So it doesn't matter whether I got u square. This whole thing is 0. So we can just sub in half m times the final speed, 16 square. And this will give us m. 0.18 kg. Why did I write in green color? I also don't know. I just suddenly like green. So if you manage to prove the answer, 0 0.18, uh, that's good. First mark usually comes from your half mv square equation. Did you know half mv square? And the second mark, if you substitute the correct values in to get your final answer. So that's two marks for your proving. Now in exam, if you didn't get to do this or you're like, miss, I don't know how to do it. It's okay. You take this answer that they ask you to show and you continue on in the next part. So let's go part two. Calculate the height above ground. Just now we tried to use MGH, cannot find, right? Now we can use MGH. So you have a GPE decrease of negative 60. I mean, decrease means negative. So we'll just say change in potential energy is MGH. Oh, don't forget change in height. Uh, you could rewrite this as mg change in height. Okay, because we're looking at a change. 
So this is decreased by 60. Mass is 0 0.18. G is 9.81. Yay, we can find our height, change in height from, with reference to ground, I suppose. Then here, you would find a height of 33.979, somewhere there. And for the final answer, you could write 34 or 33 point zero fine with either one mark for final one mark for mgh okay next oh this is where we come determine the average resistive force as you fall from balcony to the ground you gotta be a little bit careful when we think of force what do we think of newton's second law means f equals ma can use right well, we don't know the acceleration. None of that mentioned. This is the energy question. Chances are, if there is resistive force happening, you cannot use our kinematics Stuva equation because your acceleration not constant. Acceleration is not constant. It keeps changing. So in case you don't remember, they will ask you a lot of... Uh, graphs for acceleration generally they look like this lah. you start off at 9.81 then it will decrease until zero that's how it looks like this is if there is air resistance or resistive forces in play versus if there's no air resistance it looks like this oh 9.81 all the way acceleration against time this one no friction with the air so how are we going to find resistive force if we cannot use kinematics equation and we don't know acceleration, average acceleration. So, I mean, look at the acceleration is is decreasing. How are we going to find average? Cannot. So we cannot use this. We need to use when there's friction involved. Use energy, conservation of energy. When the object drops, ah, from very high, drop down. Think of the energy changes. You start off pretty high up. You end up down here. Well, on the part, in the process, you drop down now, <laughs> like this. So you lose GPE. So I'm going to write here a decrease in GPE. Now, where has the energy gone to? Of course, some, some has become kinetic energy. So we have some change in kinetic energy. Gain. From rest up there, you drop it down. Okay, look at the whole journey now. But because of resistive forces, there is another one. This, we call this work done against friction. Work done against friction. And what is work done? We just defined it. Where is it? Work done is the force and displacement of an object. So over, over this entire journey, there'll be some frictional force. Lah. I'll just draw it like this. Drag force, let's call it. And it keeps changing. So we find the average. And we're trying to find average resistive force. So this one you can replace. Let me rewrite the whole thing. This will be plus force, frictional force, times the distance traveled, which is the height, the change in height from top to the bottom. Okay, so we let's let's write everything we know. So this will be this right here, change in KE. The other one is change in GPE. Okay, we are ready to sub in all the values that we know. Firstly, GPE is given to us, decreased by 60. KE, increased by 23. But at some point, you reach terminal velocity. Then all the other energy becomes... Work done, as, by, work done against friction. Ah, so this one is force times 34. 34 is the height previously used up here. How far is the height? So now here you calculate, <clears throat> you should get a value of about 1.0882. Depending on how much decimal you plug in, it should be about run 0.1 when you round it off. So here, one final mark. You sub in in the correct energy conservation equation. That's another mark. So remember, energy conservation, uh, this is generally, you can use it for anything, especially if there's friction involved and you need to do a calculation. Remember, energy loss due to friction. Okay, let's keep moving on. Oh, explain. Okay, when you see this type of question, they want you to state the variation of what? Magnitude of acceleration. 
Oh, so they're asking you what happened to the acceleration of the ball during the time. So when you state, they're asking the question, what? What is the acceleration of the ball during this time interval? Before it reached constant velocity. Okay, so what's the acceleration? Think about that. And the explain part, you must say why. What's the acceleration and why do you say that? So we can say acceleration before it reached constant terminal. Okay, maybe there's two parts. When you first release the ball, it's kind of not really moving, but there is a force acting on it. This force is the weight of the object, mg. W equals mg, remember? Because of that force, there's an acceleration. This is what we call acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.81 meters per second squared. That's the beginning. So maybe I'll talk about that first. So let's see. The acceleration. Because you must answer what now. What is the acceleration? Let me answer. Acceleration is initially 9.81 meters per second squared. Then what happened next? Because before it reached constant terminal velocity, something else will happen. So imagine your ball has sp speed up. And now it's moving faster. The weight is still the same. Didn't get heavier, didn't get lighter. But now you have what we call drag force, opposing weight. So your acceleration now has to be smaller than 9.81 already. Because got two forces fighting each other, ma. they cancel each other out, kind of. Not completely yet, but they are opposing each other. So when you're moving faster, you have that. So acceleration is initially 9.1, then decreases. Eventually, at terminal velocity, you decrease to zero, la, but they want before terminal velocity, so we're not going to worry about that. Okay, so acceleration initially and then decreases. Why? Now must answer why. Must explain. Why do you say it do it, it changes that way? So you need to link <clears throat> where did the drag force come from? Drag force generally we say is proportional to the velocity. Okay, see on this side. Uh, so the faster you move, the bigger the drag force. So let's explain that. So it decreases. Why? Because as speed increases drag force increases so the resultant force decreases force decreases okay what i mean is this uh, newton's second law net force equals to ma so the weight minus the drag force equals to ma if your drag force is getting bigger and bigger or oh, then your weight will get minus off already lo. okay so here um two one two three three possible marks one mark definitely comes from the idea of acceleration decrease another mark talks about uh, as speed increase drag force increase now the third mark can, can either come from initial or it could possi possibly come from you explaining the resultant force. So once again, my official mask game not out yet, but the third mark will come from either of those places. So that's all for this question. Make sure you know how to explain drag force. Think about what does friction do to a system, cause it to lose energy, slows down the acceleration. That's why we have terminal velocity. Alright, so that's all for this video. I'll see you in the next one.